Hey everybody, I wanted to record another Roll20 tutorial video. This time I wanted to tackle one of the tougher topics, which is initiative. Initiative is not the most elegant system inside of Roll20, but once you get a handle on it, uh, once you've kind of taught your group how you want to do initiative, it should go pretty quickly. In fact, it can go a lot quicker than it does in in-person tabletop gaming. It can really save a lot of time. So I've got set up here a little scene uh, that I made uh, earlier in my campaign, you know, it's a river exploration. You've got some adventurers going down the river and then they're going to run into some bad guys. Uh, but uh, every one of these characters is set up the way that I do it, which is that, that there is a initiative bonus score in their character sheet. So I'll just open up one of these and I go to their abilities and attributes and every single one of them needs to maintain their initiative bonus inside here. That's a variable that can go and be referred to. Uh, you can see that this player has actually learned the Roll20 macro system over time and has different versions for different buttons that they have available to them. Uh, and, and they have this, these abilities, they can go and you know uh, click on them during the game to speed things up. But for initiative, I have an initiative macro that I have available for everyone here, token initiative. And it's a complex one, but I'm gonna step through uh, go through it step by step to explain what it does. So the token initiative is a token action and when you do initiative it needs to be a token action. It needs to make sure that the character has the right person selected because even characters, uh, players can click on multiple tokens sometimes. Say if they have a familiar and you give them control of the familiar's token, they need to be able to do one versus the other whereas bars, you know, things that they've got down here might be for everybody. So you know, just to show it when it's done, uh, I'm going to click on this Zarek mini here, and then the token initiative macro shows up here, and I click on it, and then it says, oh, am I rolling normally, or am I rolling with advantage, or disadvantage, or something like that. So I'm going to do a normal roll, and I'm going to submit that, and up comes a Zarek in the initiative. I can see I put my mouse over, and I can see that Zarek rolled with a plus two, and that, that was the initiative bonus. Zarek rolled a 13, got a 15 total. Everything looks kosher there. Now, if I said, oh, wait, Derek, you should have advantage for some reason. He goes, oh, sorry, I'll roll that again. Roll initiative with advantage, submit. Now it comes up as a 21. When I put my mouse over it, I can see that Derek uh, actually rolled a 19 on one D20 and a nine on the other, uh, and that netted out to a, you know, a 19 because he did a 2D20 keep the highest one roll in the macro, if you want to know how that works. So the, the actual text there, 2D20, KH1, means keep the highest one. If you're rolling two dice, you want to keep the bigger of the two. So let's break down how I built this by doing just a little bit of a tutorial in the macro system. So first of all, you can get an attribute from the mini that you have selected by doing uh, this, uh, this at sign selected token name. So if I don't have any tokens selected when I roll this, it's gonna tell me there's an error. But if I have a mini selected, it's gonna go and go into the selected token and then go get a variable from inside that token. And here, token name is straight off of uh, here. That's actually the variable that's used right there. So next, um, so that's great. So now you can see that's being used inside of this template here. Next, remember that we can do inline rolling by doing the double square bracket. So here, 1d20 plus one is a simple roll, but I can annotate the modifiers on that roll with a single square bracket. So you can see that really clearly here. That init, because it's a single square bracket, that's just text. So that doesn't get computed into the number total. So there I rolled a four, but when I put my mouse over it, it shows me the dice math that was rolled and I've got a little text annotation there that's useful. So maybe if you had you know, multiple modifiers involved in something, that could make it really clear that which plus came from what thing. Next, uh, if I have uh, an initiative bonus stat, I can say instead of having that hard coded, you know, just actually the one I typed in there, I could have it be a variable coming from the character sheet, making that macro start to be useful for more than just one character. So I can go into the selected character and I can go and get their initiative bonus. So do that, I have to have somebody selected. Let's pick another character. And there you can see that actually the, the rogue of the party, you know, no surprise has a huge dex bonus. So the rogue has a plus six initiative 
And I, you know, with the same macro, I can be targeting different characters with different bonuses there, plus two on, on the cleric. Great. So now I figured out how to do that. So now I can start combining the things I've learned and I can say, you know, a selected token and then some text to explain roles initiative and then into here. So this is the last little bit here that you got to learn. Now I'm going to remove it first here. It's that at tracker. So first I'm going to roll for say the wizard and say the wizard Kethra rolls initiative and roll the critical. Nice. Um, but it's that last bit that at sign tracker with the curly brackets around it. That's the magic. That's the thing that's going to take the number result of a roll and put it in for this selected token into the, this thing here, which is called the tracker. So I'm going to do it again. So selected token, Kethra rolls initiative. I'm going to take the full result of this roll. And the very last step is I'm doing this ampersand signed to the tracker and I'm sending the result here. It was a 12 and the selected token. So all their, all their stats show up here real nice. Uh, shows up inside the initiative tracker. And that's the base of how it works. Everything else is just templating and dressing. So I'm going to go and I'm going to show the full text here. So you can see line by line, the uh, first thing I'm doing is I'm getting uh, the name of the template, which is simple, which is uh, one of the base templates of Roll20. I think you might have to have uh, one of the D&D &D character sheets loaded or something, but I always have D&D &D loaded so that that one works for me. You can try a different name here to see what uh, template works. But then the template in the CSS and in the HTML calls out a couple of variables for where you want uh, the different things to go. So here is Zarek there uh, is the car name variable, char I mean, character name, and then also the mod. So it tries to put out the mod so that it's really visible what the mod should be. Uh, and then what the role was, our name is initiative, and then everything else that we were doing before. Almost forgot to record this. There's another bit of this macro, which is that uh, the part that does the drop down. So if you, some people like doing this, some people like having two buttons, one for advantage, one for disadvantage. Uh, you can always click it twice and just manually set it by editing inside the initiative if that's easier for you. Uh, if maybe the first one was higher, the first one was lower. But if you do want that drop down, the syntax for it is this question mark notation that you see in the middle of the macro here. And if I'm acting weird or if there's extra noises, it's because this cat has decided to chime in on the recording. Get out of your cat. All right. So you do the question mark and then the question inside uh, curly brackets there and follow the syntax to kind of have this delimited setup of what it says in the drop down, comma, and then the uh, text that goes into the dice math. So that little thing helps you have uh, a drop down to select what type of D20 roll is happening. So now I can uh, sort the initiative descending and I start with Zarek because he rolled a 21 and you know, Zarek moves. And then I say, next up, Kethra moves. All right. Next up, Kethra moves. Next up, Soren moves. Great. But let, let's go back to Zarek for a moment. So let's cycle back around. Now Zarek's a barbarian. So very often he'll start out the fight with a rage action. So I need to be able to add something to the initiative. That's probably a smarter way to do this. I haven't quite figured it out yet, but what I, when he says he initiates a rage, yeah, his player is pretty good about tracking this himself, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to add rage and then minus one here. And what that is, is a little bit of dice math where it'll actually subtract from the initiative every time it comes back around. And I'll add this into the initiative order. It comes at the bottom, so I got to drag it back up. But here, if I set it to 10, because his rage is going to last a minute, which is 10 rounds, when the initiative comes around and it starts, it decrements, so it subtracts one, because I put that dice math in there, uh, in at minus one. And then when it comes back around again, Where's the rage? I say now he's got eight left. And that's a really easy way without introducing other systems to sort of just track the duration on spells. And if his rage ever ends, I just go and delete it. Real easy. So that's how I do initiative inside of here. The nice part is, is by having it in the turn order, this tracker object inside of roll 20, it's gonna work the same even if players have a different macro or if they like just hand typing it. Or if you just want to, you know, say, add somebody to the tracker, say, give them, add them a turn. So like if I clear 
remove all the turns. The, the easiest way to do initiative here is probably just to right click and say, um, this is, there's a way to add a turn. There you go, add a turn and then just set it. Say if you just rolled it and I didn't tie it in. Whatever it is, it all ends here and then you can really quickly cycle through. This is the combat tracker with status, duration, spell durations, things like that loaded into it. So give that a shot, uh, see what you think. And uh, one of the extra benefits is if you are using D&D Beyond, so I've got one of the characters up here in D&D Beyond with that plugin loaded. So if you are using third-party systems that sort of like integrate in with uh, a little bit of script uh, action in your browser, if you are using plugins and such, if I do roll initiative for Thotham here in Beyond 20, uh, which I've done previous tutorials on, and if I switch back to here, uh, it'll roll Beyond 20, you know, that actually stole the Beyond 20 macro. All right, so here we go. I don't actually have to maintain that initiative bonus in roll 20 if I don't want to, if I'm doing this instead. So because I've done that and I've rolled him in, uh, I'm not really sure why he didn't show up in the turn order. Let's try that again. There he goes. So there's Thotham in the turn order. Maybe I had to have him selected. I don't know. So then here uh, I should be able to uh, work with lots of different systems and have them all emerge in because sometimes you'll run into a player who likes likes having their initiative a different way. All right, that's it. I hope that was helpful. Thank you. And uh, you know, I, this is YouTube, so I guess I'm supposed to ask you to subscribe or something. I'm just going to keep making more videos. Some of them are tutorials. Some of them are like replays and animations of me. Uh, playing D&D &D with World 20. Uh, let me know what you like uh, and I'll just having fun making content. All right. Thanks everybody.